What's up guys, it's Richie Rich back yet again and this time I'm doing a review of the sports comedy Olympics bobsled film starring great comedian from the 90s John Candy and this is Cool Runnings Alright folks, how's everyone going? And folks, in this video, it is an actual uh, movie review and it's a review that I actually did uh, two years ago. So before the craziness of 2020, before the time we didn't have to wear masks, you know, we had the freedom to go outside, no lockdowns, you know, at this time I was still um, in United Kingdom, you know, looking to journey towards Canada, you know, so um, before like my eventual trip in December of 2019, you know, I put a lot of like um, content reviews out because I knew that like um, I could use, um, I could use like my creating content um, and just the skills I've learned like making videos once I get to Canada. So this was one of the reviews and I also have another one I'm going to be putting out um, soon of uh, Cool Runnings that came out in 993. Uh, it's one of my favorite um, sports you know movies you know of all time you know as like with white man can't jump and you know he got game and i definitely love the performance of john candy and leon robinson being in here ducky dog and you also got malik yoba you know so definitely you know um you know check out this review you know we we'll warn you you know this was in 2019 so i didn't have the luxury of a better gopro camera you know i was using the same <laughs> Uh, I was using a uh, like a really really uh, low end camera that I end up selling for rent once I arrived in Canada. But you know I'll put the links where you can learn a bit more now. You know so well with that being said, let's get this video on the way. You know back home in Jamaica would be like a legendary legendary uh, film. You know and this was uh, presented by Walt Disney. Is is a very um. Uh, I can say like landmark type of films, you know, because um, obviously, you know, you know, if you check the history, the back in the day in the nineties, it was very kind of rare to see like, um, first of all, like a Disney production put in like, you know, no pun intended, four black um, uh, actors in the lead and uh, in a vehicle mass, uh, you know, mainstream uh, film, you know. We at the time, um, you weren't really seeing people, you know, who looked like me um in the kind of like um big spots unless they were like a denzel washington eddie murphy or samuel l jackson you won't see too much people from a jamaican heritage or an african heritage uh international mainstream type of films you know so it was really cool like to um jump in and see this film again as i'd seen it in the past like when i was a uh, when I was a rich boy, you know, I used to watch this sometimes, like uh, some scenes for Disney, you know, I always remember this uh, electrifying cover with uh, four of them shivering in cold in Calgary and, uh, you know, John Candy in the background. So, so I went through the actor, Cool Runnings tells the tale of, um, this was basically uh, based, uh, it's basically based, based on uh, true events that happened in the late 80s. Uh, what happened was the Jamaican sprinters at the time uh, were trying to get in the uh, Olympics, but not the Olympics as we all know of the Summer Olympics. You know, we've seen, you know, Usain Bolt and other great like su super sport athletes. But we were trying to get like a last like kind of qualification to get into the Winter Olympics, but they couldn't make it um, as sprinters. You know, the ones who actually went there were sprinters. You know, so the only um, the only option that they could like uh, take a chance on 
was to do bobsledding you know it's only a winter sport you know where you would have like four participants like working together and they're basically going through this kind of icy slope to make it to the finish line in the best time flat so a lot of twisting and you know a very very dangerous sport you know i've seen in like this film you know a lot of like the uh, athletes you know sometimes collide with like when they're swerving too quick like to avoid like the um you know as it's starting to turn the ice tracks you know they sometimes get hit you know so it's a very very dangerous and risky sport you know so jamaica jamaica actually qualified for the first time in this uh, debut of the winter 88 olympics as well, the jamaican team consisted of four brethren you know so you had at devon harris Dudley Strokes, Michael White and Freddie Powell. Freddie Pratt Powell actually couldn't make it to that uh, last stage, you know, so as a last, like, um, you know, they needed a replacement. But Stokes was chosen to for the debut of the 1998 uh, um, competition in Canada, um, you know, because they were seen as the ultimate underdog, because this was the first time Jamaica was ever seen in, you know, um, in the Winter Olympics, it's something that is basically outside the comfort zone. You know, when you think of Jamaica, you should think of like, you know, the Usain Bolts, you know, um, uh, the, uh, you know, the female, you know, the relay team, you know, all them like winning, you know, gold from sprint in 200 meters of relay. So to be in bobsled, you know, and it's not really like their kind of uh, forte. You know was really um uh it was really surprising but with the people in canada they really enjoyed them and they became popular because they became the ultimate underdogs you know because at that time no one had seen jamaicans let alone four black uh black men try for try to qualify for the winter olympics in bobsled but if, um you know what happened in the actual events you know cool runnings like loosely takes um, added more into kind of the blend of jamaican culture you know comedy i mean it is a disney picture you know so it's just take it's just like kind of recreating the actual events that happen and just adding even more kind of light to it you know it's like it's a film that's about like you know inspiration you know inspiring um people to you know like you know step outside the comfort zone you know and also just the kind of like uh you know sunshine that like you know jamaica and jamaican people bring but with the uh as the four athletes i mentioned the title character title actors that play them so you have leon robinson who i've not i think i've seen in a few other like um obviously but i'm not gonna say i'm the familiar like most familiar with but he does the best um in this position you know um he plays like the uh He's the sprint off who's basically, you know, trying to follow in his dad's footsteps, you know, his dad used to be this great, great, um, uh, you know, Jamaican uh, sprinter back in the day, you know, but I don't think he was able to get that, like, actual gold to actually get for glory, you know, so Leon sees his, his dad in him and he wants to succeed where his father failed. So you always see with his character, Spanok, yeah, um, he's always seen as the guy who's always determined and trying to make the impossible possible. You know, like um, you'll see, you know, and and he's he's always seen in, in this film. He's always uh, like just a very good like leader. You know, he's um, he kind of leads by example. You get what I mean, and he always feels like he's the wrong right person to turn to. You know, the other three, um, the other three uh, ones who are representing Jamaica. So you have Doug Doug, who I do know. I saw him in a class act with uh, Christopher Kid Reed and Christopher. Uh, play Martin, you know, he was like the one who was in between them, you know, and Paulie Shaw also started there, you know, so he's the very like, he's the kind of slap stick kind of um, comedian in this film, you know, to bounce off of the seriousness of like the other two actors, which is Malik Yoba, who I had no idea he appeared in this film, like, um, when I saw him for the first time, I was like, what, that's the, what's the guy who appears in like, you know, Empire, you know, you know, these other like great films. He also played in Soul Food, you know. He plays like the strong man in this film and you know, Malik playing your brain, but his whole goal is just to get off the island, you know, which um it touches a lot of um, kind of serious you know what I mean, as a Walt Disney film, you know, which is you know comedy and you know it's dealing with you know sports, you know, and like um that whole kind of like you know getting to the happy ending of a Disney film as it should be. It's dealing with like, you know, um, you know some people get kind of get trapped in these kind of like third world countries where there's no kind of way you can actually 
fulfill your destiny and dreams, you know. He actually sees this as like an opportunity for him to get off the island, you know, once and for all, you know. So he just wants to, uh, initially he doesn't even want to join the team, you know, he only wants to join because um, he believes this is their last chance, you know. And uh, last but not least, what is Raw D. Lewis playing Junior Bevel? Lewis's character playing Junior, you know, he's the one who already has like kind of his uh, future kind of set out, you know, by his dad. He comes from like kind of a wealthy uh, kind of upbringing, you know, and his dad, similar to a lot of like ethnic uh, families, you know, they want their son to be like someone, some, you know, like a, a work trait that's very like seen as like um, it's responsible, you know, it make people proud, like a doctor and all. That, you know, an accountant and all that kind of stuff, you know, but he actually kind of rejects his father and just kind of want to follow his kind of own dream. You know, just that glue, you know, to put this one together is just a great performance by John Candy. I mean, playing Irving Blitzer, you know, the Blitzer does have that, like, Canadian kind of, you know, like, um, that's what you'd expect to be something someone called from Canada, like the Blitzer. So, you know, John Candy's playing um, in Blitzer, you know, um, John Candy I'd seen in, I'd only seen in Home Alone, which came out just three years uh, before this, you know, I know he was another noble um, comedian, like, in the late 80s and early 90s, you know, I really wish I could see, you know, more of his work then, you know, because I'm a big fan of, like, um, as you've seen, like a big fan of like uh, comedy, especially like of um, the stars in the nights, you know. And from what I've seen at uh, Home Alone, um, I see him in this, you know, and it's just also able to blend with like the Jamaicans kind of like, uh, you know, time to express itself, you know. He doesn't just seem like just that, you know, white guy who's just trying to use them for their ulterior goal, you know. He really, really digs the, as you can see at the end, you know, you can see he, he really digs like what the Jamaicans are bringing, you know, that ultimate underdog. Film starts out is in um, Jamaica, you see, um, you see Leon's uh, character, Dance Barnock, you know, he's um, just leaving his place, you know, and first of all, you just got if you just see this film from the opening, just that cool, um, the way the cinematography is shown of just that cool setting of this, you know, just the way how Jamaica feels, you know, you just, like, I can feel like I'm in Jamaica, you know, so when you see him just running in the start, he's just like training, doing like, you know, sprints just across the streets of Jamaica, you know, and he's getting ready because later he's supposed to have his uh, Olympic kind of heat trial stages, you know, so he can, you know, try to attempt to qualify for the uh, Olympic finals, which would be in the summer, I think, a couple years after. So when the actual race happens, you know, you're introduced to Malik Yoba's character, you're introduced to just to Robbie D's uh, character, you know, and they're all in the, the same sprint. You know, and basically, you know, who's the person when they're going to take them forward to, you know, represent Jamaica in the finals for the Olympics, you know. So, they all three of them are running together, you know, and, you know, they get getting to the end. And unfortunately, a junior, a player Robbie, you know, he actually trips and he takes down both, uh, you know, your brain, your brain might know some dense, you know. So, it <laughs> what happens if you get to the end, you know, so. It really, really pains us in Leon's character dance because, like, you know, he's one of the things since he's a kid that was his dream to, you know, go to the finals of the Olympics and represent Jamaica, bring home that goal. Though, so, because he wasn't able to do that, you know, he talks to one of the, I think he's one of the like uh, chairmen of uh, Jamaica, you know, he wants to deal with like any sort of body of sports, uh, you know, deals with Jamaica, you know. He speaks to him and he basically says, like, he needs to go, like, do the race again. He says that that would take too much time, you know, so the option comes like, well, you know, I, I need to find some way to get to the Olympics. And he sees a picture of that room and he sees a chairman and he sees a picture of the wall with him. And also, he sees a picture of like John Candy, you know, uh, 20 years ago, you know, he knew um, Dennis's dad, you know, they used to like, um, he was someone who got like a... Uh, you know, um, medals before and had to compete in Olympics with his dad. You know what I mean? So like, he basically says like, um, oh, like, what is this guy doing now? Where is he? He said he's still on the island, he's still in Jamaica, you know, but he, he basically does like, what's well, like, You know, so then this kind of sees this like, this is like make or break, you know, um, let me just, uh, <laughs> let me just like give this a try, you know, and it's funny when he comes in, he asks the chairman again, he says, oh yeah, one thing, uh, what does, where's Bob Slayer, <laughs> you know? <laughs> 
it as a nail. This is the one who actually brings up the, um, the idea of like, look, we can still make it to the, uh, you know, finals, but it's just not. Instead of doing sprinting, what we're used to doing, we're gonna have to be doing bobsleigh, you know. And you can even see scenes at the start, like Dougie, E. Doug's character. He's been practicing like a kind of go kart racing, you know. What I mean, it's like they're doing it like on the streets, you know, just the past time. You know in that area in jamaica you know so um it's obviously not professional practice but they were kind of known to the idea of like transitioning that to once they get onto the ice track you know so then this is all for it just does he just has to convince like all three of them you know who end up you know coming in the end you know like uh, i but he most of all has to convince john candy's character you know blitzer because he feels like uh, blitzer is kind of just going through this um you know he didn't email bar and he's just not He's just kind of feeling like um, he, he's living in the past, you know, he saw himself like uh, when he was winning glory, when he was, you know, going to the Olympics, you know, he was always bringing those new superstars and that, and he can't take him out, he can't take himself out of the failures, you know, and he, when this kind of opportunity presents, the opportunity is presented to, to him, he's just kind of like, nah, you know, I just don't want to go, you know, I, I, he's kind of scared to fail again, you know, and just from more like um conversations with like dance you know really really trying to push him like you gotta do this i will never give up and you shouldn't do too you know at the end he acquiesce he acquiesce and he says like you know i'll give it a shot you know for it mostly for him because he knew his father you know so when they actually show like um they they round up like the best like kind of athletes like who can possibly take part in uh, be the athletes in the bobsleigh you know it shows a film of like what bobsleigh is and now it's cool seeing a disney style all of them run away and you only already have the four there and um you know john candy to instruct them but the cool part is when they actually do get to um canada you know because um they they it shows like really really um awesome montages of them training um in jamaica you know it makes you know richie rich want to even visit that place more you know, love them like going around like the uh, around the islands, going into the tropical like you know forests. You know the bridges. You know, you just see like the open vastness of that particular part of Jamaica. You know, so when it switches to the scene, like um, they're ready and then they go to Canada and like they're wearing double double jackets, double double boots, gloves, hats, scarves. You know, um, you know, air masks. You name it. You know, it's just it's a hysterical moment. You know, so um, there's like, you know, four guys who have never ever left, you know, first time going out of Jamaica is to compete in the uh, worldwide publicized Winter Olympics, you know, which is like, you got to give a hand for that. When, when I talk about how this film is inspirational about following your dream, you know, there's a scene like when there's, um, you know, your dream or um, junior and Sanka you know they're sitting down talking about like you know what they want to do you know Neil Bremer says like you know he wants to go live here you know what I mean he his whole thing is like he's gonna get out of the island and become somebody you know so he shows he has like a picture of like Buckingham Palace you know and Sanka la laughs at him and then Ravi um, Junior Junior actually comes down he says no you know you don't have to laugh at him you know he wants to do that you know he was saying like he's the own father was only living in one heart and you know he's been able to become this kind of like uh, upstanding man just because he didn't quit and he always saw the light at the end of the tunnel you know what i mean so he was just saying if you want to live in buckingham palace like no dream is too big you gotta do it you know what i mean and he restores that confidence that um you know your brain or malik's yoga character always had you know because i know how it is for like you know people in these third world countries um the only thing you can have is hope you know hope is such a strong thing to be like you know things suck now but you know someday you know i mean like um if i just put all my effort into this someday i can become somebody you know so when he sees that picture it's just for him to keep that kind of grip like yeah i can still make it you know what i mean you know don't fall whatever you want to do you can do it you just have to keep on grafting you get them to like you know the bobsleigh you know so like they're in calgary and they're practicing in the um because they set a whole area for like all the um athletes from you know germany switzerland sweden most of them country even i said most of them um countries who are so used for them winter sports you know they are they're there you know practicing and the jamaica's coming and they're automatically because it's actually they're in contention to actually possibly get a gold medal 
you know what I mean like from their abilities that they're doing on their track you know it could be possible you know anything's possible when you're in this uh, kind of a competition in the Olympics you know so like um but like um I know I said dance but it's Darius Darius Luke Robinson's character let me correct that lastly Darius yeah she has like a moment to kind of say it's like um, the gold wouldn't kind of make the champion I am already a champion for doing this you know so he doesn't put gold and he says it to the other four like you know it's not like the main priority the main thing is we got to go there make Jamaica proud and also have a good time so we can remember this forever you know not just all this pressure like oh if we get gold with gold it's not a you know it's not a success you know every day being in this kind of um, big sh uh, spectacle sports spectacle around the world is a success every day it's a success every day you know so when the actual um, the, you know final um, competition happens you know uh, they're there everything goes well they're you know they're on the bobsledge you know killing it as they should you know and unfortunately once they're actually zigging and zagging down the uh, ice the ice like kind of slope uh, one of the screws actually falls loose and it to ultimately turns the boss head to come uh, like it crashes and it goes flips upside down you know so uh, there's a long pause you know the Jamaicans get out you know they're safe there's no casualties nothing's going wrong you know and once they actually kind of stop they're actually like only like you know kind of yards away from the finish line you know so they already know that they finish you know uh, dead last so they said just to kind of like because you know we got the whole world watching you know and what we're wearing we're wearing the colors of our nation you know in a great um great show of like um you know like a like a heroes like heroes you know they pick up the bobsled and they walk you know to the finish line you know with like the whole uh, Canadians and even the other opposing teams that just you know dislike them because they were just under the underdogs and different you know they showed their appreciation by clapping them on the way to the finish line you know and it's it's just a great you can see like even Irvitz um, John Candy's character um, he just really um, uh, is proud of them you know it's like you know that's my boys you know we did you know getting gold wasn't the ultimate prize just for you lot just to be here and participate was uh, was equivalent to winning the uh, championship let me talk to you about the 993 uh, soundtrack that followed this film um, this was one of those times that the soundtrack uh, that appeared on this even boosted the film to even bigger bigger um, size you know even bigger bigger like um, areas you know what i mean so it's always great when you got the film that's very um you know not even decent but it's like a superb um uh like you know commentary and like a visual of like how the olympics you know has always been you know and especially for these newcomers of jamaica coming in so to bring that kind of music just to flow in with the movie was truly great and it was led by one of the you know one of the supreme tracks from this uh from the soundtrack which is i can see clearly now by uh jeremy cliff one of the first like um uh tunes to hit the billboard track in over 25 years you know so it's a very very landmark um tune and much tune that end up becoming like one of the highest uh you know one of the highest um chart singles in that year of 1993 you pull, um uh, theme composer was Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer was one of the ones who uh, you've seen him do this music for most lately, like the uh, superhero films, like uh, Man of Steel and the you know Zack Snyder films. But I always preferred Hans Zimmer's uh, theme music from uh, the music he did in the Batman, um, uh, the Batman Christopher Nolan uh, series. You know, uh, Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises. You know, so Hans Zimmer uh, conducts a few scores within the actual uh, film scenes you know I believe like some of the ones when they're actually uh, I believe the openings Hans Zimmer and also the montage of them training it's a few of Hans Zimmer's scores you know and uh, you know that's just he's just another credible um, uh, you know theme uh, scorer you know you know you can even you know um, he's up there now you know with his uh, you know catalogs and catalogs of work with like greats like uh, Danny Elfman or any, any you know more corny you know and the other selected tracks are just the other just uh reggae um you know rastafarian uh, music that you would hear 
you know, you would hear in a film that's definitely dealing with, um, you know, obviously Jamaica's like first attempt in a winter Olympics. You know, it's the it's the music that it blends well when they're in Jamaica, and also the scenes when the four of them are moving around Canada, like. The, the music does express the whole idea of what they're trying to achieve in this uh, bobsled, you know, Olympics finals. Be uh, based on like you know true events, you know, and you only shaped it a bit just to add that kind of Walt Disney kind of finesse on the film. I feel they did a terrific job, you know. And what's another? Um, uh, great, um, you know, another great uh, achievement with this film is most of all of these stars, you know, most of all of these like actors, they're not like um, I keep saying at that time it was still if you weren't a Denzel, I forgot to mention Wesley Snipes, um, and you go, you want a Wesley Snipes or a Samuel L. Jackson, you know, um, and it wasn't like um, being directed by Spike Lee, the Hughes brothers or you know John Singleton you know it was very difficult to see like you know title of you know black actors in a big big budget and you know in a big like a uh, you know what I mean so to see them four you know and they all hold their own you know they're all convincing and they're all believable and you can already see the kind of like this is actually what this is pretty much like what happened in the actual events of the AEA so you know they all do the terrific job and as I mentioned like the, the um, having John Candy in this role just ha added that complete set you know what I mean hey you've got like uh, you know you got the Caucasian who's already had experience you know um, in the Olympics and he's bringing what he knows and what he's known to these like young hungry Jamaicans who are trying to make their nations proud you know what I mean, and I just love the whole setting from like it being in the first scene, uh, the, the first like uh, third of the film in Jamaica, you know, someone who's never been Jamaica would love to go to Jamaica because they've seen this, you know, and then to Canada, you know, for someone, you know, who has been Canada, who's going to be going to Canada. Last thing I just love about, as I talked about, um, uh, you know, how it's like an inspirational film, I, I just... What I just adore it is, it's just the whole, it, it's like it's the ultimate challenge, you know. I think, um, yeah, so Leon, like Malik Yoba and also Riley, you know, at the start of this film, they're gonna, they, you know, they're the ones who wanna be sprinters. And because it doesn't work that way, I love their kind of like optimism that they're willing to try something else just to get to Olympics. Some people will only be like, oh, I can only be, I can only be a soccer player, I can only be a basketball player. If that doesn't work out, you know, I guess it's over. I'm not gonna try and do something else. So, 1993's uh, Walt Disney's uh, Cool Runnings. Um, let me know if anyone, um, let me know if um, what your thoughts of uh, this um, family, uh, family friendly like sport. Those are shout out to you know, if anyone who's a Jamaican, you know, what do they uh, feel, um, you know, seeing uh, their kind of team and then nationally being on center stage on the screen, you know, on the silver screen, you know, please just drop any comments, comments about this film. And as always, you know, stay tuned for more upcoming 90s review, but which guess what, which will be coming very, very soon. Peace.